Hi everyone, it's Marianne and for today's video, I'm sharing with you philodendron plants that are great for beginners. And thank you so much for joining me today. And this is also kind of my excuse to share with you the philodendron plants that I have in my plant collection. And to be honest, philodendron was a genus of plants that didn't really interest me that much. And the only ones that I gravitated towards to are the pothos-like philodendrons, which are the philodendron heterosane plants, which you would see is still the majority of my philodendron collection. But this year, I kind of like took a challenge and branch out to genuses of plants that I've stayed away from in the past and one of them is philodendron and so far this year my philodendron collection has expanded quite a bit from the pothos like or philodendron heresaeum plants even though I've been plant parent for a while philodendron is kind of new to me and the ones that I'm just really familiar with are the philodendron heterosaeum so the plants that I have that I can tell you are great for beginners but some of the philodendrons that I do have or have tried my hand on in the past I can definitely tell you they're probably not the best for beginners and I can tell you which ones in this video but before we get started, if you're new to my channel, hi, my name is Marianne. Welcome to My Oasis Life, where I take you along my houseplant journey and share with you some of my tips and tricks along the way. I also create lifestyle videos that is focused on sustainability, wellness, productivity, and share some of my personal and travel vlogs here and there. So if those type of content interests you, please make sure to subscribe to my channel before the end of this video and make sure to give this video a like and comment down below. I would love to hear from you. But yeah, so let's go ahead and get started. So in front of me, I have six philodendron plants and I'm going to talk about maybe three or four more philodendron plants that I have or kind of currently have, but they're not here in front of me right now. So I kind of do the same with like the must have pothos plants video that I just did. And if you haven't seen that, go check it out. I'll link it up here and also down in the description. So when it comes to philodendron plants that are pothos like, those are definitely the philodendron heterosaeum plants. And the first one I'm going to start with is none other than the philodendron bacil. So with the philodendron bacil, I loved it when I first had it, but I kind of like fell out of love with this plant and unlike other plants that I had where I do fall in and out of love with it. With this one, I just kind of like, uh, with it ever since I kind of like fell out of love with it. But as you clearly see, I still kind of have it, but it's not really mine. I don't really take care of this anymore. It is in the other room and someone else is taking care of this plant. So I just kind of like borrowed it for this video. And I actually acquired another philodendron Brazil, I think last year, that I thought might be a cream splash because of the coloring of the leaves. With philodendron Brazil, you can tell it is a philodendron Brazil because of the lime green with the dark green variegation in it. But with this one, the part that is supposed to be like kind of lime greenish is more of a cream so I thought it could be a cream splash that's just mislabeled as a philodendron bazil but when I did bring it home I did see that it was bringing out a little bit more lime variegation in my indoor setting so it was a philodendron bazil after all but for some of you who have watched my previous videos I did a tropical bed outside with my reject plants and one of the reject plants was that philodendron bazil and now that it's growing outside the lime part of that plant is also becoming lighter again and looking a little bit more cream splash so i think with philodendron bazil give it enough light it would produce like a little bit more creamier variegation instead of lime ones or it might be just like the variety of plant that i had because the philodendron bazil has multiple sports as well the cream splash the rio the gabby and the silver stripe which i believe most if not all of them were cultivated by Gabriella plants. So if you kind of like want authentic Brazil sports, any of those four that I mentioned, your best bet is to buy it from Gabriella plants because they are the cultivators or the primary cultivators of those house plants. And I think the prices have gone down a lot. With Philodendron Brazil, it is probably the cheapest Philodendron heterosaeum out there, but the sport versions of it are also becoming a lot cheaper. And I do have one of the sports version, which is the philodendron cream splash, which is this one. So this one, even in indoor setting, it does maintain the cream variegation, but it's not showing a lot of cream variegation as of now. But I did grow this from a single leaf cutting that I got from a plant swap. And with this one, I'm not really sure if it's exactly a cream splash. It's definitely one of the sports. Maybe not the Gabby, but the single cutting that I got that I grew this from look a little bit more like a philodendron Rio. And the person that gave it to me or swap it with me don't really know either. So we will see, we'll find out. Right now it's just looking a little bit cream splashy, 
which is okay, but you can definitely see the difference in the variegation between the cream splash and the Brazil side by side. And with the cream splash, the care for this is no different than Fuldendron Brazil, and the care for the Fuldendron Brazil is no different than caring for a golden pothos. So these are very much easy care plants, so you don't really have to have expertise or advanced knowledge when it comes to taking care of house plants if you want to dive into philodendrons i definitely recommend going with the philodendron heterosame first and another philodendron heterosame that i have is the philodendron lime so this one is kind of like the counterpart of the neon pothos they look exactly the same except this one is philodendron heterosaeum and grows like a philodendron heterosaeum and by the way if you want to know the difference between a philodendron heterosaeum versus a perpendum aureum Pothos, do check out my previous videos or go check out my complete guide to Pothos book. They're all linked down below as well. With this one, I was never really truly in love with this plant too, but it is a great plant to have as you can see because this one is very neglected, but at the same time, it's a very low maintenance plant. I often forget to water this. I actually just watered this before filming this video and it is currently in the other room right now and the only plant indoors that is not currently in my room, which I kind of feel bad for. I probably should move it in my room so I could pay more attention to it. It is a great plant, but like, like I said, if I'm going to lump it all with my other pothos collection or house plant collection as a whole, this is probably not my go-to plant. But if you don't like the neon pothos, but you want a philodendron plant, I would go with the philodendron lime or the goldilocks philodendron, or I think it's also called the lemon lime philodendron. It's a great plant to have an alternative to the philodendron brazil if that is not your thing either. It is also a very low maintenance, low care plant, great for beginners. And the next one is the philodendron minkins. I'm not exactly sure if this is classified as a philodendron header same as well, but it definitely acts and grows like a philodendron heterosaeum. It is a trailing plant, but you could also give it something to climb on so that it will produce larger leaves. And I do find with the philodendron micans, if you don't give it something to climb on while it could trail beautifully, like a Brazil or the philodendron lime, is if I just let it trail and don't give it anything to climb on, the leaves grow smaller and smaller. And I like the Brazil or the lime, even if I just let it trail, the leaf size kind of tend to stay the same even if it trails long. So with this one, if you want larger leaves, it's probably best to give it something to climb on, but you can let it trail as well. And this one used to be a very uncommon, very expensive plant, but now it is a lot more common and a lot cheaper compared to in the past, but probably still a bit pricey in some areas and depend on when you get it from. I haven't seen this in big box stores yet. If I have, it's very rare, but I do often see this in any nursery or greenhouse. I can often find a philodendron mycans for a relatively good price. I wouldn't probably pay more than $20 for a four inch pot of mycans. And I've seen it a lot cheaper, maybe even like $15, maybe $10, just depending on the size and how mature the plant is already. With this one is actually my second mycans and it is a propagation of the mother plant. Because with this one too, it doesn't grow well for me after some time, especially if I let it trailing. Because like I said, it grows smaller leaves and with smaller leaves, it looks very leggy. And also the one thing that I don't like about philodendron heresiums is when they trail, they look very unkempt. Unlike an epipenum aureum or epipenum pinatum, the longer they trail, the nicer they look. With me, I find with the philodendron heterosaeums, the longer they trail, the uglier they look. But that's just me though. It's just like an aesthetic preference. So this one, I definitely recommend before going to like the philodendron melanocrysum or like philodendrons that looks like the philodendron micans, but are the more uncommon or rare kinds. Start with this one, see how will you do with this, and then move on to those other more expensive and more high maintenance plants. And I think those are all my trailing philodendron houseplants. With philodendron as well, they have different growth patterns depending on the variety. So there are the trailing ones, the climbing ones, and the one that grows like a bush. And I have two of those bushy type of philodendron plants that I acquired recently, which is, so the first one is the philodendron patent lady. I got this off a plant swap recently. And this one is a juvenile form of a painted lady. This one can get really big and really bushy as well. And with previously, I kind of like stayed away from bushy type of philodendrons because they don't really appeal to me. With this one, I just really went with the variegation 
And again, this used to be one of those rare and common philodendrons, but now are a little bit more accessible. When it comes to the bushy philodendron plants, there are a bit more accessible and cheaper philodendrons if you want to go for that. And I think one of the rare ones that has become more popular recently because Costa Farms have mass produced it is a philodendron birkin. So if you want something that's a little bit more variegated, but kind of like beginner friendly, I would go with a philodendron birkin as well. But there are like other philodendron bushy types that are probably more beginner friendly, the one that you commonly see in garden centers. And with the bushy types that I have, they are probably a little bit more higher maintenance for a beginner, but I think if you want to dip your toes into the more uncommon philodendron bushy type plants, these are great plants to start with. And the next one I have is the philodendron white wizard. And how is this different from the white wizard or the white knight? Not really sure. The white knight is currently now being mass produced by Costa Farms if you're interested in that. This one I bought from Stride Stem in their pop-up at Plants Alive and it was for $30 for a juvenile seedling. And this one is not very variegated, but I was told by the seller at a juvenile stage, whether it's the Philodendron White Knight, White Princess, or the White Wizard, they don't really show much variegation until later on. And compared to like a Propenum house plants where you could see the variegation on the stem, with the White Wizard, you might see the white variegation in the stem, but not really. With the White Knight, you actually don't really see it because the stem is burgundy, I believe. So you only see it when the foliage comes out. And the variegation is not very consistent. Like you're not gonna get it on every single leaf, like you would probably with a Epipenum pinatum albo, or maybe even like a Monstera deliciosa, variegata, whether the thigh constellation or the albo, or whatever variegated monstera you have, where the variegation is consistent in every leaf, even if it's different patterns. With this one, you can get green leaves like this one, especially at a juvenile stage, but you'll also get like variegated leaves like this one. I'm hoping to get more variegated leaves with this one as it matures. I can see the leaves growing larger now. So hopefully by the time it matures a little bit more, I get a more variegation. I try to put it next to the south facing window to help encourage that variegation. Cause like with any house plants that is variegated, the more light you give it, the more you encourage the variegation in theory. And I kind of have another one that I am currently growing outside, which is technically no longer a philodendron, which is the Thematophyllum venatophytum. But for a lot of plant enthusiasts, they still consider it a philodendron. And even for some experts, they do think that classifying it as a thematophyllum is kind of like a bit premature and they call it the philodendron cellulum. And I think at one point it was also called the philodendron lickety split. I'm not sure, but I think that was the common name for it when I first started. And I also got mine off a big box store for less than $20. It has grown big right now. And I always grow this plant outside during the growing season because it can get really huge. So that's the only thing about this plant is if you want it, you gotta have space for it either indoors or outdoors. And whenever I have to bring it indoors, I chop off most of the leaves and just like leave three or four leaves on it for the winter season while it's indoors so it doesn't take up a lot of space. But I do like this plant. It does make a very jungly vibe statement if that's what you're going for. And it's also very much easy care plant in my opinion. A lot easier care or as easy care as the Monstera deliciosa, the regular variety of it. I haven't really had any issues with this plant. It does suffer from thrips very easily but if you kind of like take preventive measures with the thrips and any types of pests is not a huge problem. And that is true with any philodendron plants, I guess houseplant in general. So here's another philodendron that I acquired after I filmed this video. This is a pink princess philodendron. I did get it off a swap that I went to recently. And it's a juvenile one, but it is growing pretty well. It has an incoming growth. And I know this is a popular plant, a very expensive plant up until maybe recently where the prices have gone down dramatically, especially after since Costa Farms started mass producing them, although the supply is still very scarce. Although I still do recommend getting them from a nursery or a private seller, just because I find that the Costa Farms one are not as variegated, while the ones that I see in nurseries, while a little bit more pricier, have more variegation than the Costa Farms one. So, do support your local nurseries or your plant friends and just get one from them or like me just get off 
one from a plant trade. And so for the next three philodendrons that I'm gonna talk about, it is the climbing type of philodendrons, the ones that you really have to give a moss bow for them to grow beautifully and grow really large leaves. If you let them just trail, they're not gonna look really good. They're just gonna look very floppy. So you really have to give them something to climb on. It's not an option. So the very first one that I have is this, which is the philodendron varicosum. This was gifted to me during a plant swap. And normally I wouldn't try my hand on this. I don't recommend this one to beginners because this is supposed to be a very finicky type of philodendron that requires a little bit more advanced care. But now I would say at this stage at least, compared to the other two climbing philodendrons that I have that are supposed to be easier care than this one, this one is coming out on top. This one is so far the easiest care out of them. Haven't had any issues with it since I brought it home and tried to propagate it. Now I'm still trying to let it grow roots and whatnot. And it only has one leaf. It has a new growth that is trying to come out. It has been trying to come out for quite some time. And here's an update on the varicosum. The leaf has unfurled and has a new one coming out. I already started trying to give it support. And this is the old leaf. I'm thinking of just cutting that off once this new one come out. And right now it is outside in a prop box, so it's getting a lot of humidity. And humidity does help this type of plant grow a little bit faster. So that's why I'm keeping it in a prop box and will try to do so for as long as I can. But it was actually pretty acclimated to the outside environment already before that. But that's the update on the varicosum. Doing very well. Me compared to the other two that I have, which I currently am growing in my tropical bed. So the first one is the philodendron brantianum. And this one is the brantianum. So far I only had one that rooted from the tropical bed. I have dug that out since because the weather is getting cold. I'll have a separate vlog on that in my fall plant care checklist. So this is the brantianum. We'll see how this one works. I do have a couple of nodes that have rooted but has doesn't have leaves yet. And I did the same for the Philodendron Splendid that was gifted to me by Arid Asia. And for the Philodendron Splendid, this is what's left of it. I do have one that has rooted from being in a tropical bed. I have dug it out since, put it in moss, also in my prop box. And this node that I don't think it rooted, but it didn't die out and has kind of like a growth point. So we will see what happens with that as well. Hopefully it survives. But if not, what else can we do? But yeah, so far, not a beginner friendly plant for me, not an easy care plant for me. But once it propagates, maybe it will start becoming an easier care plant. But we will see. It has to survive first. And the Philodendron Splendid is actually a hybrid of the Varicosum and the Melanochrysum. And as a hybrid, it should be an easier care than either the Varicosum and the melanochrysum, but as I mentioned earlier, my varicosum right now is a much easier care and doing a lot better compared to the philodendron splendid that I have outside, which is basically a rescue plant at this point. So people would say go for the philodendron splendid before you go for the melanochrysum or the varicosum because it's supposed to lead easier care. But again, from personal experience, that is not what is happening. Others might have a different anecdote when it comes to the philodendron splendid versus the varicosum because so far for me it's kind of like the vice versa and this one is the el choco red i recently got this at the Genera pop-up i had a whole vlog in it and i'm going to do a dedicated video on my entire journey with this plant but definitely not a beginner friendly plant i know this is popular people tend to jump on this right away and i'm telling you right now as a philodendron beginner it is a challenge for me to acclimate this as an import plant and this plant does not import very well. So if you're going to spend a lot of money on it, just make sure you know what you're doing. So those are the philodendron plants in my collection and the philodendron plants that I think are going to be great for beginners. Some of them do come with a warning label though that might not be great for beginners. But what is your experience has been like with this plants or any philodendron house plants? Do let me know down in the comments. I would love to hear from you and if you have any other recommendations on great philodendrons for beginners. I'm pretty sure other viewers and subscribers of this channel and those watching this video would love to know. 
but thank you so much for watching if you like this video please give me a thumbs up if you're new here please do subscribe i come up with videos every week and if you're feeling extra generous please do consider sending me a super thanks the button is down below any super thanks that you send me will go back to this channel to help me create more and better videos for you all and if you haven't yet check out this videos up here until my next one but until then i see you i appreciate you take care of yourself and each other and have a plentiful day Bye.